I call it a big, small town. This is a, a town that started as part of the lumber industry and, and then you know, started to make carriages and then started to make horseless carriages when they started to put motors in them instead of, you know, horsepower instead of horse driven. Uh, and that was sort of the boom of Flint, Michigan. Mm -hmm. uh, and because of that boom, we were lucky to um, have you know, the early pioneers of the auto industry be so successful that they left a legacy in institutions like this. As people in the area became more wealthy, they also had a sense that they needed to create a good environment for the people that lived here. So we had some of those industrial barons who started our park system, that started the cultural center, that started the Flint Institute of Arts and the Flint Institute of Music. The people here had a vision of what Flint was supposed to be um, in terms of education and culture and community. And they really put their pocketbooks where, where their vision was and they donated and, and gave money for works of art to make it into this great collection. The Founding Fathers saw the importance of having not only a collection but also the schooling so that we would have more of an appreciation of the collection we have. And my husband and I decided to live in the city limits, in a neighborhood. And so we met lots of people who were actively involved in the community and felt that that was the way that you put down roots, is you become actively involved. And actually our neighborhood was the cultural center here. And so we would come frequently to the library and the FIA and the Sloan Museum and the uh, performing arts centers and doing that gave us exactly those kinds of experiences and made a very nice hometown for ourselves and our children and were able to grow up here. When I moved to Genesee County in 1974 and learned about the whole cultural center, my first stop in the cultural center was actually my wife took me to a performance over at the Whiting. And although, you know, I've been to nice facilities before, I mean, the Whiting was just absolutely gorgeous and the shows they put on were fabulous. If you read the history of Flint, Michigan, you would never think that an organization like the Flint Institute of Arts or the Cultural Center would survive what Flint has been through. Right. It's gritty, it's resilient. They pride themselves on being able to get through tough events and tough times because they've been through a lot. The community members take a lot of pride in that resilience and their ability to overcome. You just would never predict that a city like this would have this sort of collection of art um, in these buildings um, and, and music across the street and theater down the street. Uh, but it does because of philanthropy, right? because of the generations that came before mine um, that kept that alive. Yeah, I mean, the stories are what makes Flint such an amazing place. Uh, the people are the fabric of this community. This community gives and it gives and it continues to give. The more you come into the museum and see what it has to offer, the more you want to add to it, uh, either through wealth uh, that you contribute or maybe through legacy, uh, to see that this continues. This community is so rich with talent and, and giving of their time and of their treasure. You don't, I don't know that you find that in other communities. I mean, of this size, of a, 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 an area of this size. There is an expectation that the Flint Institute of Arts is always going to have something cool going on. I mean, we have uh, art series, lectures, we have uh, film series. Even during the slowdown these past couple of years, there's still a lot of buzz about the things that go on at the Art Institute. It's a still an interesting place for people to come. It's critically important to keep a place like this healthy and vibrant and growing. It's always beautiful. It's always changing. It's always open and welcoming. And so it sets a tone of the community. I'm gonna say over the last 15, 16 years that I've been associated with this organization, They've pulled people from the community to be part of. For instance, the collection that is the Sun's exhibition right now are people from this community. I think it speaks to the community spirit of Flint. Uh, in 2018, our voters went to the ballot to approve the Genesee County Arts, Education, and Cultural Enrichment Millage. It increased their taxes, but it allowed them to continue to foster uh, the growth and the support of our cultural center institutions. Everyone in Genesee County gets free admission. Uh, and you know, that breaks down barriers. 
We're excited that our, our citizens voted for that. And it, when it comes for a renewal in 2028, we are sure they're gonna renew again. Uh, and we're, we really think it's a, a vital part of the success of the cultural center. There's a lot of pride, a lot of city pride, a lot of community pride here. And I think people know that a place like this, which is so public and so egalitarian, I mean, you don't have to be a member here like a country club or a church. You can be anybody and you're welcome and you're made to feel welcome. The arts open up eyes, open up imaginations, open up discourse. We started in 1928 as an art school, which not by design has become one of the largest art museum schools in the country. We really blend the relationship of making and, and what has been made. So we have what's been made in the galleries, we have what's being made in the studios. Having a, a studio program and a studio facility attached to a museum just seems like the most natural thing in the world. It's just such an unusual, it shouldn't be unusual, but it is kind of an unusual opportunity for a museum. Making things is so much fun and it's such a source of satisfaction for people. And to be able to work here and work with students that are having that joy and to be able to go into the studio with them, to teach a class, to even take a class with them as an employee is phenomenal. It's really exciting. The arts have that kind of power. They're so essential to the learning process. Growing up over the years, I can't remember a time when I wasn't coming here for art classes or events or, or summer camp. This community is very interested in its children. Uh, they're very interested in literacy. We're trying to help kids get the skills they need to be successful in school and in life, but at the same time also learning how to be artists. We're teaching them to problem solve. Artists create problems and the solutions. You have to decide where you're gonna start and where you're gonna finish. So you're creating a problem and you're creating the solution. And in the process, you're communicating. We're developing self-confidence because you, you're the author of something. You, you've started something, you've completed something. And if you've ever made anything, you know, you're probably pretty proud of it. Yes. Um, you would think, you know, it's their firstborn in many cases that they're never going to part with. Students have an opportunity to produce art that is then made available for sale in the museum gift shop. I mean, it's a school, it's an exhibition place. Um, it's a uh, facility that uh, provides wealth back to the community, provides opportunity for all ages to enjoy various types of art. Um, so it, it really covers the whole spectrum, I think. I've been in the field 50 years. I'm proud of what I've been able to accomplish here and the people that I've worked with have done a great job. They're ready to go on to new projects, do new things. I'm excited about somebody replacing me who is just right in step with, with, with that. Excited about racing forward getting even ahead of it. Our legacy is a very important part of who we are, but we also recognize that the world is changing, museums are changing, and we wanna be a part of that. We look to diversify our donor base, looking to bring in younger uh, minority donors that really can feel a sense of ownership of the museum, which is very important. Right now our focus, and, and actually it has been our focus for the past two decades is to increase the amount of black, indigenous, people of color, artists in the collection. And we've been very successful at doing that. Um, we have a lot of immigrants. We're, we're a very diverse area. So I think over the years, as the collection has grown, as the museum has grown, as you'll see, I mean, it's really been transformed into a world-class facility, both education as well as um, exhibition. John obviously has done a marvelous job with the Flint Institute of Arts, and I personally will be very sorry to see him retire. Any place that I have ever worked or lived has always had change, and one of the most healthy indications of an institution is being able to manage change. 
And so having new leadership come in needs to be viewed as an opportunity for excitement and revitalization and new direction. I think whoever comes here has a lot to work with. And I'm not just talking about the school, but we're situated in such a unique cultural neighborhood, as you know, we've yeah. been talking about it. Across the street is the Science and History Museum, right, and which has just been totally renovated. State's largest planetarium is next door. Three universities, the Music Institute within walking distance. Being right next door, we can organize events with audiences that can just simply walk over here. There's a, literally dozens of things happening every single day. Your calendar could be totally full. of. There's, there's not a lack of things to do here. Not many cities have that, that luxury. Medical town, college town, culture town. And all in Flint, Michigan. So there's tremendous opportunity. Thank you.